instant that this meeting will be broadcast live to the internet or filmed and will be capable of repeated viewing or another use by such third parties. If you are seated in the lower public seating area, it is likely that the recording cameras will capture your image and this will result in the possibility that your image will become part of the broadcast. This may infringe your human and data protection rights and if you wish to avoid this, you should move to the upper public gallery. Apologies for absence? No apologies for absence, Chair. Thank you. Declarations of interest? None? Right. OK, thank you. Uh, I'll just go through the procedure for this morning. Um, essentially, the licensing officer will go through the application. Uh, you will then make a statement, uh, after which members of the panel or any members of the public or objectors could question you on that. Uh, there are no objectors present, so they will not have a chance to speak. You can then sum up, but you cannot introduce any new items into the application at that point. Uh, and then we will ask you to retire while we deliberate and we'll give you our decision straight away. All right. Okay, thank you. Can I ask you to go through the, uh, the application, please? Thank you, Chair. Good morning. Uh, we have received an application made by Delio Spirito Limited for a variation of the premises licence in relation to Ilvino, 28 Queens Road, Buckhurst Hill, IG9 5BY. The authority received the application on the 17th of February 2023. A copy of the existing licence for the premises, uh, the application for the variation and public notice are all attached. The application is to remove the restriction relating to the on sales of alcohol pre book tasting events and allow the sale of alcohol for consumption on and off the premises at any time authorised by the licence, currently Monday to Sunday, 10 a.m. to 2300 hours. The responsible authorities have all received a copy of the application, which was advertised at the premises as well as local newspaper. A copy of the blue notice and newspaper advert is also attached. All residents and businesses within a 150 metre radius of the premises were individually consulted. The authority has received representation from a local resident, which has been attached, and a letter in support by the landlord. Essex Police licensing have agreed conditions with the applicant, which has also been attached. The representation received relates to the crime and disorder and the prevention of public nuisance. In determining the application, the subcommittee may take the following steps to consider necessary for promotion of licensing objectives, namely to modify the condition of the license or to reject the whole part of the application. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, obviously, the three, the three panel members are indicated here, so that's, that's us. There's often the fourth member, um, but there isn't today. Um, would you like to just go through your application, please, and tell us what it is you want and why you would like it? Well, good morning, yeah, and bend thank that you. Back. Bring your microphone down a bit. Yeah, the system's not that good. Okay. Um, well, good morning and thank you for the opportunity to make my case here to you. Um, we opened Ilvino uh, in Queen's Road about just over two and a quarter years ago now, something like that. Um, and since then, we've, we've been trading um, in, the, in, the, in the street. Um, obviously, um, the economic conditions at the moment are challenging, to say the least. Um, we opened in the midst of COVID. Um, so, again, another you know, sort of brave move, if you like, but um, we saw the opportunity to bring something to Buckers Hill, um, and obviously during our initial uh, application for a licence, we, we heard objections as to why that was maybe not such a good idea, which thankfully um, we, we prevailed with, and then um, about two years ago, we also applied for a licence to be able to hold wine tasting events in, on the premises, which we were granted, uh, with the condition that the events take place behind closed doors. Um, so we effectively have to shut the shop. Um, there's no uh, passing trade. Uh, we have to, um, they are private events or ticketed events, which we've been doing successfully for the last, as I say, ne nearly two years. Um, 
We've had no uh, reports of trouble or incidents or anything untoward from the customers that, that attend these events. And I think this is very much um, part of, of, of my, um, my kind of submission here, that we have brought um, a shop to Queen's Road that is very much in keeping with the nature of Buckers Hill as a community. Uh, we're offering something very different. Um, I think one of the initial objections was that, well, we don't need a, another wine shop, we've got Waitrose. Um, well, we're offering a very different product range and uh, range of, uh, of wines to, to what Waitrose are able to supply. And I think that's been um, uh, sort of indicated by the fact that we've now got a successful business which is on the cusp of growing and, and sort of um, becoming more involved in as, as part of the community. So what we would like to do is um, remove the restriction of only being able to have these events behind closed doors in the evening because we have a, a facility in the shop to allow customers to, to sit and enjoy their wine. Um, we have uh, a considerable number of customers asking if they can do that, of, quit, of which, of course, at present, the answer is, I'm afraid we can't. So <clears throat> there is definitely the demand there. Um, and from our point of view, I think, um, as, this, as we've just heard, there's, there's no objection from any of the, the other authorities to us, to us doing this. Um, and looking at the objection from Mr. Rankin, um, I just feel I, I sympathise with his, his predicament. Um, but if I could put it in a nutshell, we're not his problem. Um, you know, we've, we've, had, um, we've had the licence, as I say, for a couple of years. And if, if I may, um, I'd like to just um, ask you to maybe just take a quick look at these, uh, this illustration, which I hope... Oh, thank you. Has the licensing officer seen this? Uh, no. Ah. Uh, technically, you shouldn't mm -hmm. be introducing any no. new information oh, that's already um, produced. Um, so, uh, oh, I, I think I was aware of that. It is simply a map um, showing the location of of Il Vino on Queen's Road, um, the position of Mr. Rankin's house. Um, another um, contributing factor, which I, th I think actually maybe is a bit of a side issue, is the location of the other pub in the area, uh, the Railway Inn. But the main objection, I think, which Mr. Rankin um, raises is the, the issue of uh, crime and disorder, drug dealing, public, public urination, and public nuisance, public urination and littering. Um, he quite rightly, uh, I think, points out that he gets uh, a certain amount of inconvenience from this behaviour um, relating to his property's position adjacent to the forest. And as you'll see, on a direct route home from the Three Colts pub, which is a matter of metres, you know, 100 metres, 200 metres from his home, um, that, is the, that is the route that anybody would take going from that side of the, of the, of the street across the, the railway to go to the other side of the railway. They wouldn't go via the underpass, which is where the railway inn is situated, because it's just an indirect route. We're situated a considerable distance from there. And, you know, I, I, I would sort of beg to differ with Mr Rankin because I don't believe that our customers are the kind of people um, that urinate in public and go and buy drugs on, in alleyways over footbridges over the, over the railway. Um, you know, our audience is older. Uh, it's most definitely at least 35 plus, if not older. Um, the price points at which we, we sell our wines are not at the, the sort of level where younger consumers would, would, would be seeking to buy quantities of alcohol to consume in short periods of time. The sort of people who exhibit the behaviour that Mr Rankin's outlined are, are traditionally young men, you know, consuming lots of alcohol and involved in purchasing uh, or, or distributing drugs. Um, though they are not our customers, I promise you. Um, as I said, we've been operating with an evening, with permission to have private events for nearly two years now, without any incident whatsoever. And uh, I really do not think that um, you know, Mr. Rankin's point is, is in any way connected with us as a business whatsoever. Um, so what I'd like to add to that is that, um, 
you know, the continuation of Il Vino as a business um, would be very much uh, benefited by the ability to, to serve customers on the premises. We're talking about sitting down in a civilised manner, having a glass of wine, maybe a plate of cheese and some charcuterie or some bread and olives. You know, this is not having 10 pints watching the football. Um, you know, we're talking about grown-up people enjoying a cultural and civilised way of some leisure time. Um, we were even mentioned in the Times and the Sunday Times last weekend in their, um, their annual review of best places to live in England. Um, they then break that down into each county and Buckers Hill was nominated as one of the best places to live in Essex. And within that content, we were outlined as one of the best places to go in Queen's Road. Um, uh, they, they wrote, uh, wine affectionados should, lead to Il Vino, should head to Il Vino, a shop with a tasting room that can be hired for private events. Now that's not much, but I think to get that featured in the Times and the Sunday Times says that we're operating as a, as a fairly civilised and decent sort of business. Um, so yeah, the bottom of Queen's Road is, is a bit of a ghost town at the end of the day. There's not much going on down there. Um, Unfortunately, some, clock, some shops are closing. Uh, it's not a part of the street where, in fact, Queen's Road as, as a whole has challenges. Um, I've seen a, uh, one of the council's discussion documents around how to best improve uh, Queen's Road, especially the lower part, and to make it into more of a destination. Um, and some of those points sound very ex exciting and quite interesting, maybe the pedestrianization or the improvement of planting um, the, uh, the creation of maybe uh, artisanal markets or whatever, but the idea is to create a destination um, in, in, the, in the Queen's Road area. And my feeling is that um, at the moment that, that isn't something that our customers can enjoy. Um, a number of customers have said that they need to go to Wanstead, where there are two such places where you can sit in and have a glass of wine and a little something to eat, or even North Chingford. Um, we get customers coming from Epping, from Chigwell, from uh, Loughton to come and shop to buy their wine. And I think that's a, a real testament to the fact that we're offering something of, of a point of difference and something that customers value. And we'd like to extend that offering um, to be able to enjoy a glass of wine on the premises um, and, and make the most of what we can offer. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Um, well, I now ask the panel. Um, They've got any questions to ask, uh, Councillor Stocker? Mm -hmm. Councillor Mead? Yes. Yeah. You could activate. Yeah, mm -hmm. can, yeah, turn yours off. Sorry, they have, only one will work. Um, I was just wondering what you call yourself. So, are you? Um, because it, what would you say now? You're more of an off license, or what would you? Call, what would you call it? A bar, or how <laughs> is this going to work? Um, no, certainly not an off license. Um, I hate to sound slightly snobbish about it, but when when our initial application was being reviewed, the, a lot of the objections came from people who misunderstood that we would be an off-licence. An off-licence sells mainly value-driven alcohol, if there is such a thing, um, beers, snacks, all sorts of other bits and pieces. We deliberately set out to be uh, a shop that sold fine wine, without being, again, too elitist about it. Um, there isn't anywhere that offers that the reason for setting up the business was just the absence of any opportunity in the area to do that. I live in Woodford Green. Um, I've worked in media for all of my career and latterly as a publisher of, of, a, of a wine publication. And so I always used to buy whatever wine I wanted in town. Um, and then when I decided that I wanted to open a wine shop, it just struck me that there really was nowhere around anywhere near where we are. Um, that offered that kind of service to customers. So, no, we are absolutely not an off-licence. Um, definitely a wine shop uh, or a wine merchant. And I would say going forwards, uh, it's very much... We, we have a range of over 500 wines in the shop at the moment. I think that's a considerable choice for, for local residents. And we will be able to offer many of those um, to customers by the glass. Um, some of them are quite expensive wines that maybe you wouldn't necessarily want to spend that much money on an entire bottle, but you might enjoy a glass of a fine wine um, if it were available to you. Yeah. Yes, do come back. So, yeah, so um, is, this, um, is this a plan of your, of your, sh your shop? Have I got that? 
the inside. Page 34. Nine years off, so they can speak. Yes, that's, um, that's a plan from the lease. So I'm just wondering, so where do people sit? There's tables in there, is there? Is there one table? You're, you're talking about one table or more than one? At the moment, we have one table, which is situated in the back room. So what happens if there was more than, I don't know how many people that fits that table, but if there was lots of people in there, is there a certain amount of people you can have in there? Or do you, do you know how you work that out? At the moment, the, the table comfortably seats about 14 people. Um, and that tends to be the, the number that we have for wine tastings. Um, where we've had events of greater numbers, we've, we've not had um, necessarily the, the table um, in use for, for all of those people. So it's just been a locked doors and, you know, we've had um, sort of serving staff with trays, you know, serving customers, you know, a glass of champagne or whatever it is the, the event is for. Um, what we agreed with the uh, Essex um, Police Licensing team was that um, were the li license to be granted to us that um, it would only be table service. And you can see from the size of the shop, it's not a very large shop. Um, we would have, um, uh, obviously, the, the table at the back, uh, may, we may choose to keep that. Um, my guess is that we would probably need to utilise that space better for storage um, because, obviously, the value of the wines that we have, um, there, is a, there is a security risk there, the, the closer they are to the door. Uh, in fact, only last Sunday we had uh, a break-in um, at the shop where you know, a couple of guys just literally levered the, the front window out of the shop. Um, it wasn't ransacked and we were very lucky that it could have been a lot worse. But my, my inclination is to move more of that stock towards the rear of the premises uh, and then um, have um, probably, I mean, in terms of how many we could see, it would, it would likely be um, single tables um, for privacy and, and more of a uh, sort of a, a, a social, sort of a cultural social environment. Um, so I think we could probably get, I don't know, a dozen tables in there at the most. Uh, it's not a very large space, but I just want to be able to serve customers during the day and at other times that our license permits, so that we can offer a, um, a place for people to come and go and enjoy a glass of wine. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Any other yeah. questions? No, that's fine. Um, right. Well, th there is there are no objections present, so they're not going to speak. Um, and you can sum up if you wish to add it, but you mustn't bring anything new into the thing. But I think, to be honest, you've been very clear on what you're looking to do. But if you wish to sum up, you do now have the opportunity. Um. No, I, th I, think, um, I think I've made obviously some notes that I wanted to, points that I wanted to make clear um, during this hearing, and I think um, um, they're all done, so thank you for the opportunity. Okay, thank you very much. Well, I'm happy with that. We'll uh, go to private session then, yeah? Should we stay in here? I think it's probably easier. Okay. If you wouldn't mind, then we'll ask you just to uh, to wait for us outside, and uh, and we'll 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 stay in here and uh, make our decision. Sorry, I turned it off, Chairman, because you were talking. Yeah. Um, no, no, no. Well done. No, well done. I sometimes forget it. Right, the licensing subcommittee uh, has uh, received the application for Elvino, 28 Queens Road, Buckers Hill, Essex, IG 955BY. We consider that the application satisfies the necessary requirements in order to be considered as it is on the prescribed form, it has been advertised and relevant notifications given. We have taken into account the relevant written and oral representations, the four licensing objectives and the council's licensing policy and the Secretary of State's guidance. During our deliberations in private session, our advisory officers gave us no advice. Our decision uh, is that, the, that we should grant the application um, subject to the following conditions, which in the opinion of the subcommittee are reasonable, proportionate, and in the public interest for the promotion of the licensing objectives. 
subject to the existing conditions on the licence modified as set out in the application to vary the licence, and the conditions which have previously been agreed between the applicant and Essex Police Licensing Officer, as set out on pages 40 and 41 of the agenda. The application is therefore granted, and I remind you of your right to appeal to the Magistrates Court within 21 days of this, of this hearing. I shall now sign the, uh, the decision sheet and the application is granted. There we go. Uh, well, wish you all the best with it. Um, I, re I remember when you came to us before, in fact, that we thought this was a very niche market you were setting up on, but obviously you must have pitched it just right. So. Uh, Thank you very much for attending. I've got to turn my microphone.